Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. This video is on a basic parallel circuit. Okay, so here we have a parallel circuit. Um, we have our voltage here, 30 volts. We have a resistor 1, which is 40 ohms, and a second resistor, which is 60 ohms. Now, you know you're dealing with a parallel circuit when the resistances are connected this way. Um, first of all, if you have a series circuit, your resistors would be connected up in this way. So here's R1 and here's R2. Very badly drawn resistors there. <laughs> so resistor 1 and resistor 2. In a parallel circuit, the resistors are connected in this way. All right. Now, if we call this, whoops, if we call this point A, and this point B, and this point C, you can see that these two resistors are only connected at this one point, which is B. If in this uh, configuration we call this point A and this point B, we can see that the, both of these resistors, R1, and R2 are connected. So resistor 1 is connected to both A and B, and resistor 2 is also connected across A and B. And when I'm explaining this to students, I often just uh, tell them to imagine uh, two people. Um, here's one person holding hands with another person. And in this situation, you can see that they are connected or they're holding hands like they're dancing, all right? So that's one way to think about it. But these two points, both resistor is connected, are connected across A and B. Okay, so typically when you're given uh, all the resistances in a parallel circuit, the first thing that you solve for is the total resistance. Now the total resistance, the, the formula that you always use is 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And if we had more resistors you can, in parallel, you can continue on. So plus 1 over R3, etc. There's a, a way to do this. Um, we can manipulate this formula so we end up with a similar, simpler equation, but only Really, we only use that for two resistors, and it becomes R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. If we had more than two resistors, we'd have to use this equation, and we just add more resistors in the denominator. <coughs> Excuse me. So resistor 1 is 40 ohms. Resistor 2 is 60 ohms, and we divide it by the two of them added together, 40 ohms plus 60 ohms, and we end up with 2400 ohms divided by 100, or actually let's still put the ohms in there because that's wrong, divided by 100. So here we end up with our total equaling 24 ohms. Now, now that we've found our total resistance, we can solve for our total current. We go to Ohm's Law. You see if we're looking for current here, we can divide both sides here by, by R, and we end up with I total equals E total over R total. Our total voltage is 30 volts. Total resistance is 24 ohms. We do the division. We have 30 divided by 24 equals 1.25 amps. Okay, so there's our total current. Now let's just write down our total current on the next page. 
1.25 amps. Okay, so at this point, what we're going to do is uh, find, figure out what the voltage is across here. So if we're looking at this circuit and we're just looking at the battery, and let's say we decide to say that this point here is ground. So the point, at, so here we're at zero volts. If we go across that battery, we're going in a positive direction up to 30 volts. So there's 30 volts across this battery. And at this point, we can say, all right, well, here at the top, we're at 30 volts. And notice this is really just a wire. Okay, you can think of it as a wire. And so this is basically a short circuit along here. So then at this point, we must have 30 volts. And again, this is just a wire along here. So if it's 30 volts here, it has to be 30 here, it has to be 30 volts here. And of course, that's only if we're assuming it's zero volts here. And if we're assuming it's zero volts here, or designating it as zero volts, we can say that this point here has got to be zero volts, and this point here has got to be zero volts. So that means the voltage across this resistor must be 30 volts, and the voltage across this resistor must be 30 volts. So then voltage 1 equals 30 volts, and voltage 2 equals 30 volts. Now we know our voltages then across these two resistors. So we can say, all right, so we have 30 volts here. We have 30 volts here. Now we have two pieces of Ohm's law. We have our voltage and our resistance. So through here, we can solve our current. And through here, we can solve our current. Now the thing about the current in this circuit is it's running in this direction. And I'm drawing it this way because I always draw, or I designate the current as going from the negative to the positive. Your instructor may be showing it to you in the other direction. And it's just, um, depending on the class you're taking, some instructors show it one way, some instructors show it the other way. I always go from negative to positive. So here, we continue negative to the positive here. So the total current is running through the battery. At this point, the current sees two options. It can go up here, or it can go this way. And just like water flowing in a river, some of it is going to choose to go this way, and some of it is going to go this way. So the total current splits and splits into these two parts. One, that goes, one current goes through R1, and another one goes through R2. So we can solve for those currents. So I1 equals voltage or 1 over resistor 1. So that's 30 volts divided by 40 ohms. And we end up with 0 0.75 amps. Current 2 is voltage 2 over R2. Voltage 2 is 30 volts. R2 is 60 ohms. And we end up with 0 0.5 amps. Now, as I already said, these two currents have to equal our total current. So let's see if they actually do. So we have 0 0.75 amps plus 0 0.5 amps. And again, that's I1 plus I2. And I'm saying it equals I, to, I total, so let's see if that's true. We add those two together, we get 1.25 amps. And that just happens to be our total current. So we can say, yep, we're OK here. All right? Now, on the last page, I'm just going to talk about um, power. And 
in subsequent videos on parallel circuits, I'm not going to solve for power. This power is pretty straightforward, right? So let's solve for power one. Remind ourselves here that here we have a voltage of 30 volts. And here we have a current of 0.75 amps. And, whoops, 0.5 amps. So, and we're solving for power. It's simple just to use voltage times current. So, Let's use E1 times I1, 30 volts, times 0 0.75 amps. So we have 30 times 0.75 equals 22.5 power 2, voltage 2 times current 2, again 30 volts, and we had 0 0.5 amps going through here, and that would be 15, oh, I said it's amps, that's incorrect, sorry, this is watts, and this would be 15 watts helps to go slow when you're doing these things. Now, in order to get total power, we add these two together, and we end up with 37.5 watts. So then total power, we're, we're thinking, is 37.5 watts. It's always a good idea to do a check. So let's do power total equals E total times I total. Total voltage is 30 volts. Total current, we solved earlier, 1.25 amps. That's supposed to be a 2. So 30 times 1.25 equals 37. 37.5, and that is watts. So here, power total is 37.5 watts, and when we added these up, we got 37.5 watts. So at this point, we can say we're okay with our circuit. It looks like we did everything right. If you didn't do everything right, or if we didn't do everything right, we'd end up with some incorrect answers here. Okay. And by that, what I mean is we, these totals wouldn't match, that kind of stuff. Okay, so this is brought to you by Wise Guys, and I hope you have a good day.